Hey everybody, welcome in. It's another episode of Landmark Live. We're thrilled to have you with us. It's another exciting show. And guess what, everyone? We've got a special guest tonight. His name is Chris Kamler. He's back. Chris Kamler Hi, has returned. How's it going? <laughs> Last time we saw Chris Kamler, he was at the Cable Dahmer Arena doing some announcing, but they sent me a ransom note and a demand for money. I paid it, and Chris is back on Landmark Live. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're all You're... lost. <laughs> Tonight, we're going to be talking about an important topic. It's the Platte County DWI Treatment Court, and we have some special guests with us, of course, as we always do. Very special tonight. Uh, the first judge to ever be on Landmark Live is with us, Dennis Eckel. Judge Dennis Eckel, nice to have you with us. And this other guy you've seen, uh, some of you may have had an up close and personal uh, encounter with him. Uh, uh, let's hope not. But uh, Eric Zahn, Platte County Prosecutor, is with us tonight. You've seen him on Landmark Live before. Eric, welcome in, sir. Great to be back with you, Ivan. Hey, it's I fun. mean, not so much with Kamler, but and with you, it's great to be back. <laughs> and famed duck chef, I understand. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in, in the baking segment later. Uh, yes, show, yes uh, so. we had no idea the prosecutor was a chef. Uh, <laughs> and duck is his specialty. We'll hear more about that in a little bit. <laughs> Uh, tonight, uh, today actually was the graduation ceremony of the Platte County DWI Treatment Court. And so we're going to start with the basics. Let's go to Judge Eckled first. Judge, tell us about the Platte County DWI Treatment Court, what it is and how it got started. Sure. We started it, uh, well, 11 years ago, we started to plan it. And uh, the treatment court is now uh, 10 years old. We've had 159 people graduate from the program. You need to uh, go through the program with a variety of uh, requirements, uh, counseling, group and individual counseling, uh, testing uh, two to three times a week, random testing uh, for drugs and alcohol. Um, they come to court twice a month to see me, uh, to see how they're doing. We have uh, what we call trackers, they're deputies, and they're assigned by the sheriff, and they go out and check uh, on these folks and to see how they're doing, make sure that they don't have any drugs or alcohol, and uh, they go through a program that takes, uh, on average, about 15 months. And so it's, it's very rigorous. Um, and so uh, uh, that program does not exist, though, unless the prosecuting attorney provides an offer to the defendant through defendant's uh, counsel, uh, giving them an opportunity to be in the program. Okay. So, Eric, uh, let's take it uh, from your office point of view. How do you determine which folks you make that offer to? Hey, do you want to be in the treatment court? What, what so we're, we're looking for folks who we think we can help. You know, there's this popular adage that prosecutors are all about just throwing people in prison. And what we've learned, particularly with respect to DWIs, is just throwing people in prison doesn't really help. It helps us for a while. While they're in prison, at least, everybody's safe. Uh, but almost all of them get out at some point, and they get out without a, having had any assistance in dealing with the real underlying problem, which is that they're alcoholics and, and, they're, and, they're, and they drive when they drink. And so what we're doing is we're looking for people, it's usually not first-time offenders, because we don't know about those first-time offenders. Do they really have an underlying alcohol problem? Anybody can make a mistake um, the first time. But folks who've had two, or three, or sometimes four or five DWIs, by that time we know that these people are two things. First off, they've got real drinking problems, and secondly, they're a real danger to our community. And what we have found is if we can get them into DWI court without sending them to prison um, and treat that underlying problem, our success rate is off the charts. Phenomenal success rate. And so, um, it, Look, don't, don't get me wrong, we're going to send really bad people to prison in Platte County, but we're going to deal differently with good people who've just got a problem that we can help, deal, help, help them deal with, and that's what DWI court tries to do. Okay. Now, you, uh, this is after the person pleads, right? There's, this is not a diversion program. I right. Think. It's not a diversion program. It's what they call a post-plea program, and we operate under the auspices of uh, the Supreme Court of Missouri the Drug Court Coordinating Commission, and they require us to have a post-plea only approach. So they've pled guilty to a, typically a felony, and it will be on their record and remains on their record. Um, but they have a couple of carrots that are very important. Uh, one carrot 
is that they can get an opportunity to get a limited driving privilege or to get their uh, privilege to drive again. Uh, we know that if they don't go through the program, uh, chances are they're going to drive anyway. They're going to drive without insurance and they're, they're going to drive without an interlock device. Uh, those with an LDP now or limited driving privilege, um, they have an interlock device, they have a camera, they have a GPS. And so there's a way to, to monitor uh, uh, folks that, that, that have had multiple offenses. Um, and they're able to get their license back. And I think the biggest carrot and the one that probably goes uh, often uh, is not, it's not in the statute. And that is that they, they get their lives back. They get, they get to uh, reunite with their families. They get to have an opportunity to, to have a life that we, that we want them to have. What would a, what would a, a prison sentence normally, you know, let's say somebody with two or three DWIs, you know, let's, God forbid, let's hope they didn't, you know, hurt anybody, but somebody that just gets pulled over on, on I-29, what is, if that person has pled guilty, what, how much jail time are they looking at? Sure, it depends on the number of uh, convictions that they've got, mm -hmm. but, but you get up to three or four convictions, you're talking about at least 120 days in prison. You get up to four, five, six convic convictions, you're talking about three or five year minimum sentences in prison. So we're talking a long time in prison instead. And again, what we've learned about the prison sentences is they'll keep the community safe for a time, but they don't change people's behavior. Right. And you displace these people. Many of these folks are, are otherwise contributing to our community in very good ways. They've got jobs, mm -hmm. they've got families, but they've got a problem that, that, is, that is hindering their ability to be as successful as they can. And if we can deal with that without spending the tens of thousands of dollars every year, something like $30,000 a year to put somebody in prison, so we can spend a lot less money on the front end and never see these people again in the criminal justice system. Here's the amazing thing about the recidivism um, rate in our DWI court. We've done the study here in Platte County. Um, our recidivism rate is less than 2%. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you how that compares to normal recidivism rates, depending on the study that you look at and how long you look at to see how long it is before somebody reoffends. normal recidivism rates are somewhere between 30 and 60 percent. So this program works, it works well, and I tell people all the time, we just did a DWI graduation this afternoon. Some of my favorite days as a prosecutor are these graduation days because we get to hear from our graduates how we've changed their lives, and it's it's a phenomenal program. You really don't just want to put people in jail. <laughs> I, I, I really don't. Now, again, don't it's understandable. <laughs> the right people, we're gonna put in jail. Right. Is there but a, these aren't the right people. Is what was the genesis of this? You said it's been going on for for well, Your Honor fifteen years or no, so. And, uh, and when I was appointed in two thousand ten, uh, our court did not have a treatment court. Uh, there are twenty one DWI courts across the state now. Uh, we didn't have a treatment court, not one. Now we have four. We have a drug court and a veterans court. We have a uh, DWI court and we have a mental health court. I do the DWI court in the mental health court. DWI court is now officially 10 years old. So um, 11 years ago, we, we I went to the presiding judge after I was appointed, uh, Judge Hall. I said, Judge, I think we really could benefit from a treatment court. We don't have one, and so many other counties have at least some version of a treatment court. And, um, and then he said, well, you know, you're going to have to have the cooperation of the prosecuting attorney. So I, I went to Eric. Uh, we talked about it, we got together, uh, and uh, we, we put the, the ball in motion. Uh, we went down to Greene County, which had uh, a stellar program. It was a nationally recognized DWI court. And we put together a team, and I think we piled into three different vehicles and drove down there one morning early and spent the whole day and learned all about it. We went to training, national training, and uh, so we feel we feel really good about the program. So as you're, as you Thought you said it's not for everybody. It's it's it's, but you are looking. For, what's kind of that X factor that distinguishes somebody that you you feel is is going to? I mean, you're probably not going to pick people that you don't think have a chance of succeeding, versus you know just somebody that's that's you know out on a gin Friday and they got a you know DWI. I mean, this is 
I, I would Platte County in general is a it is a problem because bars are far far away from houses and you know it's it's uh, it's probably DWIs in general are probably a, a menace uh, to to the county I would guess absolutely you know DWIs are going to kill more people in Platte County this year than any other crime that my office handles mm -hmm. we, we're fortunate we're not going to have a ton of shootings we're not going to have a ton of other murders. But we do have lots of people killed every year in alcohol-related crashes. So it's a really dangerous, dangerous crime. And so what we're looking for in our office are, are the right people that we're going to allow to let in. But here's the great thing about the program is, while, while I've got to agree to let them in, that doesn't mean they get in either. Because there's a whole team of folks that screens these folks before they get in, and that team together meets and decides, is this person the right sort of candidate to get in or not? And there are people that I've said, I'm willing to let this person in. The team has looked at them and said, no, we don't think, mm -hmm. we don't think they're going to be able to succeed in this program. Um, and so that's one of the great things about this is we're bringing together mental health professionals, probation officers, prosecutors, all under the guidance of, of Judge Eckholt to make these important decisions. Now, the team that looks at that, you mentioned the team. Who's all on that team? Are you talking folks in your office or are you talking others? Folks from all sorts of different agencies. Well, we, we have uh, our counselors, uh, and uh, they're provided by Midwest ADP. Okay. Uh, we have the probation officers, and there's an extensive report that we receive about everybody that's, you know, trying to get into the program. And uh, in addition to those folks, uh, myself, Prosecuting Attorney Assistant Prosecuting Attorney Amy Ashelford. Um, one of the things that people should know is that if a person has hurt somebody in a serious way or worse, uh, they're never given that opportunity. Those folks are going to be dealt with in the criminal justice system uh, in a different way. But those folks that have uh, had multiple offenses uh, are going to be at risk the next time they offend uh, to hurt somebody. And so we're trying to stop that from happening. We're really trying to save lives, uh, not just the lives of, of the people that they might encounter in a crash, but also the lives of the people that are the defendants in the program. Yeah, very cool. Hey folks, you're watching Landmark Live. It's a production of the Platte County Landmark newspaper. If you have a question for us tonight, just type it into the comments section here on Facebook. Uh, we are talking the Platte County DWI Treatment Court Program with Judge Dennis Eckold and Platte County Prosecutor Eric Zond. I see one of the commenters tonight says, if you want a speaker who is in recovery. Well, we do have one. He's coming up with us here shortly, so stay tuned for that. We do have a person who has gone through the program, so we will hear from him shortly. So, uh, Judge, what for you personally, what has this program meant to you? I mean, it's, surely since you were kind of the the force behind getting it started, that you have a personal investment in it, and there's some kind of personal reward for you to see folks graduate this program, I would oh, imagine. It, yeah, it, it feels it feels great. I mean, it, it's gratifying. Um, we, we had four people graduate today. Uh, at the end of the graduation, um, I had, and you'll have a guest coming up later, I'll tell you, uh, his sister came up to me afterward, and she said, I'm so glad that we have this program here because you saved my brother's life. Uh, or today, uh, the gentleman came up and he said, well, you all were able to do what I wasn't able to do uh, in all those years with my son. And uh, he was sober two years now, uh, and he graduated. So the, the dad coming up. So it, it feels awesome to have people come up and say things like that. Uh, but more importantly, it's, it's uh, you know, all of us, the, the whole team, we care about trying to help everybody. and. It's 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 awesome for all of us to be part of it. Very cool. I would assume Eric's on same feelings for oh, you. Oh, absolutely, same feelings. In fact, uh, you know, uh, three or four years ago, I was w walking in the the Parkville Independence Day Parade um, and had a group of volunteers with me. We're walking down the street, and one of my volunteers came up and said, "Hey, there's a guy here who wants to to talk to you." So I run over to the other side of the street, and uh, as Judge Eckholt mentioned, this guy said the same thing. That, uh, that Chad Hansen's sister said to the judge today, and he said, you saved my life. And I'm looking at this guy, and I sort of recognized him, but he's in a different situation. I'm like, who is this? And he, and he says, you saved my life in DWI court. 
And I looked at him and I said, well, I didn't save your life. You saved your life, but I'm so happy you were able to be a part of it. And, and that honestly is what we're doing in this court, is we are helping people help themselves and, and get back and be the people that I believe God created them to be, um, to be healthy, happy people. And uh, that's, that's a really gratifying thing. Again, people don't think that prosecutors care about those sorts of things, but I'm here to tell you, we, we really do. And uh, it just, it, it's one of the most important things that I think I've been able to do in my now 18 years as a prosecutor. I'm so grateful that uh, Judge Eckel had the vision to, to, to see that this is something that would work in Platte County. It honestly is something that I had been interested in for a long, long time, but it took Judge Eckel's interest as well for us to get it going. Okay, now talk a little bit more about the testing process and, ha and how you guys check up on the folks that are in the program and make sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Judge, you want to grab okay. that one? Well, we have uh, uh, an entity called TOMO, and uh, they call in every day, and uh, they find out whether they need to go in and be tested. And then they provide a urine sample at the testing site, and it's tested. Uh, and uh, if it comes back uh, negative, everything's fine. If it comes back positive, then we have a confirmation. And if it comes back positive and it's, and it's confirmed, then we deal with it uh, as a team. We discuss it. Uh, one thing that the training has told us is you don't put somebody in jail for uh, a dirty urine. It's just not going to happen. On the other hand, if we have somebody that's driving, because none of the par participants are allowed to drive while in the program, um, then uh, they go to jail. It's automatic seven days. It's 10 days if they lie about it. And so we've had that happen before, too. A funny story about that one, but I'll, I can tell that later. I just want to say that Chris Kim was very thankful that nobody, nobody goes to jail for dirty urine. Because yeah, I mean, no, I'm, yeah, no, it's uh, behind bars right now, right? Yeah, I perked my ears up, but that's, again, another story for another time, Your Honor. Uh, we, can, we can swap those stories later. <laughs> Now, Judge, you, you told me a funny story the other day. You stopped into my office when we were talking about the pending charges against Chris. No, actually, right? Yeah, yeah, right? Uh, judge stopped in. You told me a funny story about uh, how your uh, some, somebody from your office keeps an eye out for whether the people that come to the treatment court are driving there when actually, you know, of course they shouldn't be. So, so tell <laughs> right. that story. Yeah, well, this was when the program was brand new and we had just started. And uh, my uh, clerk at that time, Judy, great person, she she would run over to the uh, probate office on the second floor and look out the window to see where everybody was going and with, whether they were getting into the passenger side of the car or the driver's side, because they're not supposed to drive. Yeah. And she noticed this one fellow, Tommy, was walking down the, uh, down the alley behind your offices here. Okay. And uh, she told me about it. And so two weeks later, we have session again. I told sergeant crater about it i said i think we somebody's driving could you go around and and run the license plates on on the car two block on cars two blocks over and uh and so anyway uh, tommy came back uh two weeks later to court he comes up to the podium we always have him come up to the podium and i said uh i said so uh how are you doing sir and he said fine i said how'd you get here today and I knew full well that he had driven, <laughs> but I asked the question like that, and, and it was fun. It was, I said, uh, he says, well, my girlfriend drove me. And uh, I said, oh, really? I said, where is she? Is she back there? And I'd like to meet her. He goes, no, she, she's gone shopping, and uh, she'll be back later. I said, okay, well, when she gets back, I'd like to meet her. <laughs> well, we get to the end of the session. I have Tommy come back to the podium. I said, can I meet your girlfriend? Uh, did she come back to pick you up? He goes, well, it turns out she's not coming back today. She had something else to do, but I'm going to catch a ride with somebody else. And I said, I said, oh, really? I said, well, then what are you going to do with your red toilet? With your car? <laughs> that's two blocks away. Uh, so uh, he went to jail immediately. And it's, it, we, we, you know, it's, it's an automatic uh, and instant thing. The deputy uh, hooks him up right there in front of everybody else. It's very impactful, and he headed off to jail. So, and he ended up eventually uh, going to prison. Now, you mentioned that the treatment of, or the monitoring of 
of DUI folks. That, I'm a tech guy, so there's there's a lot of stuff that there wasn't five years ago. I mean, they right. you know they started to put the regulators on the cars where you have to blow into them and stuff. <laughs> You know, you've got GPS devices and phones and cameras and all kinds well, of stuff, man. And, it, and here's the other device. Everybody who starts this program starts off on what's called the SCRAM device, yeah. which is a continuous alcohol monitoring system. It's an ankle really, bracelet. Really. And if you drink, it's going to know it. Wow. And and we've actually put it on members of my office to see if we could defeat it and trying to put aluminum foil between that and your skin right. or You know, we often like to like do uh, tests and stuff here. I don't think we need to be doing that test. Uh, <laughs> and I will tell you, you you can't trick this device. Wow. And um so it's so it's amazing accountability um in this program. I'll tell you another story. You know, sometimes it doesn't even take uh us trying to find um folks in the program who are driving. Sometimes it's just dumb luck. So one of our uh, uh, now former uh, probation and parole officers, he's actually now an employee in my office heading up our new diversion program, is, is a guy by the name of Eric Allen. When he was a probation officer with um, our DWI court, he was driving home one day and just happens to pull up to a stoplight, looks over to his left <laughs> and sees one of our participants driving the car to his left. So he rolls down oh, the window no. and and says, hey, I'm just going to make up a name here. Hey, Dennis, <laughs> why are you driving? What are you doing? They apparently sat through two green lights as, <laughs> as they had a relatively uh, heated conversation about why Dennis was behind the wheel. And, of course, Dennis then went directly to jail. Dennis. He did not pass he go. Have, he, he did not collect, not collect $200. did not collect $200. That's awesome. <laughs> Not awesome for Dennis. Yeah. So uh, Why hey, do you have to use that name. <laughs> yeah, I think <didn't> <laughs> folks, you're watching Landmark Live. It's a production of the Platte County Landmark newspaper. We are talking the Platte County DWI treatment court with Judge Dennis Eckold and Platte County Prosecutor Eric Zond. There's a question that popped up. What is the time frame for the treatment plan? Yeah, the treatment plan is in phases. It's in five phases, and and folks move through that. Uh, over the course of a year um, or longer. And uh, they go to uh, group uh, sessions and individual sessions. And then over a period of time, uh, that's phased down. And uh, at the, in the fifth phase, they're only going to an individual session, but they're at that time uh, going primarily to self-help group sessions. So AA would be an example of a self-help group but we can't tell them to go to AA. They can choose, you know, uh, various programs that are self-help programs. So at the end of the program, they will have been in the mode of going in a self-help, to a self-help group that they're familiar with, that they feel comfortable with. And it's always our hope that they continue with that. And, and some of them become sponsors uh, and help others. And that we always try to encourage everybody to try to help everybody else. And, mm -hmm. uh, so that's happening as well. Hmm. Very cool. Good for you guys. That's yeah. great. Now, Judge, before we let you go, now, what made you, when in your life did you know you wanted to be a judge? I mean, well, did you did you watch a lot of TV as a kid, <laughs> Judge Wapner? And, uh... Gosh, I, I never I never thought about, about yeah. it. I mean, it came about, I practiced for 27 years right. before I got to do this, and I, I'm, I'm glad I get to do it, but it was, it's, wasn't it's not it, an so you're saying it really wasn't a goal when you started out lawyering? Did no, you ever? Did, no, really, it wasn't did, a goal. No. I think I wanted to be a prosecutor. Actually, yeah, that's where the money is. Right? Right. <laughs> not so much the money, but it's the greatest job you can have. Maybe aside from being a judge, I think it's even better than being a judge. But uh, uh, they're both pretty darn good jobs. Uh, and uh, so well, you, you started off being like a hall monitor in school, didn't you? you know, like, <laughs> I was the AV kid. <laughs> oh, were you? Yeah. Okay. Well, then you're, you're loving all that. <laughs> <laughs> you're hired. You're hired. Well, guys, hey, we've got a couple other guests here. We've got an assistant prosecutor that's going to come on with us. We have a graduate of the treatment court, but uh, we're going to do a little swapping out of the guest chairs here, but we want to say thank you to Judge Dennis Eckold and thank you to Platte County Prosecutor Eric Zahn. We really appreciate you guys coming on and sharing the stories with us and sharing some information about the program. Very helpful, very informative. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. And while they are 
swapping out our equipment. You know we're on a low budget here on Landmark Live. Chris, did you know that? We are? No. <laughs> I, low budget was when we were down the street with uh, with a cell phone and a, and a ratty old yeah. corded microphone. We have kind of upped the budget, but still, we like only it. have like four of the microphones. Right, yeah, yeah, that so is that's true. where I was uh, yeah. headed with that. So, so yeah. Judge and the prosecutor are swapping their microphones out with our two next guests who are going to slide here in here soon, but we appreciate the audience joining us and sitting with us through this uh, little mic swap out now Chris, i think this is fascinating it I is really fascinating is really cool. stuff because i mean you had to drink one time uh, and, one time uh, that and, <laughs> one time when i was 21 on the you nose did, you did not drive though see no, right um no you know and this thing called uber came along yeah and i'll so tell you though i mean i mean we've i think everybody who's who's ever had a drink has you know had a choice about whether getting behind the wheel or not and and you know, Platte County, like I said, it's it's a tough county because it's spread out is what you're saying. Yeah. You know, this mm -hmm. you got a bar down the street and you don't live, but you know, you live 15 miles away yeah. on a farm somewhere. Yeah. So you're not, you got to get within there. walking distance. Right, exactly right. right. I mean, so you, you know, I could walk to the pool hall tonight if we wanted to, but uh, most most folks we wouldn't. would be stumbling out of the pool hall <laughs> afterwards. Is yes. what we would be doing. So. Hey, you remember that time we did a DWI episode? I do remember we that. Do, we we do, need to do that again. By okay, the way. I'm going to dig out the video. We're going to come on in, folks. We're going to dig out the old landmark uh, don't drink and drive episode that we did what two or three years ago chris yeah yeah and uh, that was like our most watched episode yeah that was ever. a good one chris took a couple of heavy shots and his uh, he got a little goofy uh a little silly and i was goofy and, ahead of time too, and yeah so it was it was all down from uh, there so we both felt buzzed but we never tested above never the limit, did as i recall i'll bet so. you if we tested an hour later though we yeah would, we would have lit that thing up an like hour a later street. you'd be mayor of parkville i yeah, think that's probably how right. that works yeah absolutely. okay listen up we have Amy Ashelford, an assistant prosecutor for Platte County uh, Prosecutor Arizona, and Chad Hanson. Hanson. Yes, okay. that's correct. Chad is a graduate of the Platte County Treatment Court, so let's start with Amy. Amy, what is your role in all of this uh, nonsense with working with Eric Zond? Well, working with Eric Zond, I've been there for almost... That's seven, the nonsense that's part, the nonsense. right? Yeah, yeah, right. Almost 17 years. In August, it will have been 17 years I've been at the prosecutor's yes. office. Uh, but I was the prosecutor. He chose to start with the DWI court. And I'll be honest with you, when I first started, I wasn't sure it was something that I understood or wanted anything to do with because I was used to prosecutors putting people in prison. And so we started the training and as we were going through it, I was a little bit resistant. Mm -hmm. I just was hesitant to understand how something like treatment was gonna be what was the right answer. But after, it didn't take me very long, but after a while I got in and got very involved with it and have just seen the amazing transformation of people and it has been the absolute best part of my job. And in some ways, I honestly feel like it has almost been kind of a calling of things. I really love what I do with the treatment courts. That's very cool. Now, uh, uh, Amy, you've been with uh, Eric how many years? Almost 17 years. Oh my goodness, so almost from the very beginning, right? Almost, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And so, did you know that he cooks duck at night? I didn't know that he cooked duck. So we did news here. That is news. So, uh, <laughs> is that is that the your focus primarily is working DWI cases then for? I do mostly DWI cases, and I also handle our drug court, and I'm okay. also part of our new. Uh, Platt Cares program, the diversion program that we're starting. Oh yeah, talk a little bit about that. I was going to ask Eric about that, but I forgot you'd bring that up and, and talk to us about this new Platt Cares program that's going to start. Well, one of the greatest things about being a prosecutor is it's not just about charging somebody, it's about making a charging decision and evaluating the case and deciding what is the right outcome and what is our goal for that person. And there are people who just make mistakes. Um, they're not intending to go out and commit crimes. Um, or they're what I like to sometimes refer to as young and dumb, and they just need a chance <laughs> to start yeah, over. <laughs> but so we will have a program now that will allow us to not necessarily charge their case, but put them through a diversion program first, and if they successfully complete that, then we won't ever even file the case. And so that is, uh, we're really excited about it because then they don't even have any kind of criminal history and there's nothing to be dismissed at the end um, and they have no charge or record. And if you can successfully complete the program, I think that's something you definitely earn. And so we're excited about this program. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, Chad, let's get to your story. And first of all, I want to say thank you for being willing thank to you. do this. We really yeah, appreciate you that you're willing to come on and share your story. That's impressive. And you bet. We, uh, we really appreciate your input on this. So tell us your story from start to finish, you know, just, just the highlights. Well, I never 
you know, set out to to be a participant in a, in a PCDC, <laughs> right. you know, treatment core by any means. But, uh, you know, listen, there's a uh, there's a background of alcoholism in my family. Um, you know, for many years, uh, probably since the age of 15, I drank for drank for fun, you know, and then the progression just kind of got worse where I started to get into a little bit of problems. Uh, got my first DUI when I was 21, along with a controlled substance charge. Mm -hmm. And so I figured I would just plead guilty to the DUI because I didn't want the controlled substance on my record because, well, I was graduating from college soon and I figured employers would kind of frown upon that. Um, but come to find out that, you know, later on down the line when I got my second one and my third one, you know, the, the, the first one kind of came back to, uh, to, uh, uh, basically bite me to a point where it became a felony. You know, I was a persistent offender on the third conviction. So, but you know, I, I, I truly believe that all the decisions that I made have got me to a point where I'm sitting here today talking about recovery. Um, you know, my, my drinking was, uh, to a point where I, I had no control over it, you know, and, and I knew I was an alcoholic because 10 times out of 10 times that I drank, I couldn't predict the outcome. Um, I also didn't quite comprehend the fact that it was the first drink that, that always set the cycle in motion instead of the last one. Um, so coming into, uh, you know, coming into this, this realization uh, that I was kind of uh, at a loss. I mean, I, you know, I, I tried to stop drinking numerous times. I couldn't um, until eventually, you know, I, I got into an accident where, you know, over at Zona Rosa and, and cops came and, and they hauled me down to Jackson County and, and basically stated, well, this is a felon. And I kind of was just like, oh, you know, what are we going to do? You know, I just wasn't quite sure where this was headed. Um, obviously got a lawyer. Uh, my lawyer talked to the to the prosecutors and, and you know, just basically I was I was a qualified candidate based on the uh, credentials that they aforementioned. Mm -hmm. um, and then the the recreation, as Judge Eckel mentioned earlier, began. You know, the, the worst day of my life, which, you know, ended up being the best day of my life was, was the day I got thrown in the, in the back of the, the, the cruiser. I didn't even, uh, I didn't even take the test. And I just said, you know, put the handcuffs on me, let's go. You know, I just, I just didn't care at that point. But looking back, that was the, um, that was the beginning of my new life, right? And so uh, I was one of, I was in the second group uh, in, in PCDC. Uh, 2011, I, I, I pleaded in. Um, you know, my sobriety date is, is October 24, 2000 and, uh, uh, 2011. So I'm coming up on 10 years of sobriety. Um, so that's exciting, you know, and, and this program has actually given me basically everything, right? I'm not, but I'm not sitting here because of me. There's a lot of people that are involved with my success. I say that in a very humble way that, that I've had to this point, you know. There's been a lot of things in sobriety that, that I've had to deal with, with uh, grief and with suicide and death and health problems and things like that, that we all kind of go through. And then especially the last 15 months, the pandemic, mm -hmm. trying to navigate that when you can't go to in-person meetings, which has been, you know, AA meetings are my lifeblood, right? This yeah. is how I stay sober today, mm -hmm. are these meetings and working with others and talking about recovery. This here has a great effect on my recovery. This helps cement and insulate me from going out and taking that first drink. Uh, coming and working and sharing my story a little bit and talking with others in the recovery community to let them know that, hey, there is a solution. If you feel that you don't have a way out of this thing, you know, let's let's talk about it. Let's think about it. Let's let's really discuss this thing. Um, and so through the years in recovery, you know, in the program, this is everything that they stated and then some. It's It was the most challenging thing that I've ever had to do, you know, and I had to drag a lot of people with me. I drag a lot of people with me in, in, in my alcoholism when I was in, in my active addiction. And, and then I get sober and then I still have to drag everybody with me because I need rides here. I need rides there. I need, I need them to be waiting on me hand and foot. And so it's even more of a selfish sort of behavior at first, but you know, it's, um, it certainly has paid its dividends. That's for sure. Very cool. Chris, do you have a question? Uh, I mean, congratulations on your recovery. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. that's uh, good for you, man. Um, if, if there's somebody watching this that's 21 and they're having a drinking problem or they've got five DUIs or in, and they don't want to sit 
here. Um, what what would you guys communicate to that person if they think they've got a problem? If they think they, you know, I, I keep coming back to it. And I apologize for harboring. Platte County is a drinking county, man. It just really, really is. And I know there's a lot of people out there with problems. What what is one way to 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 step take one step closer to 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 getting help? I'll go. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's uh, it's tricky. I think early, you know, folks, especially in their 20s, mm -hmm. think they have all the time in the world, right? You know, that, and I was one of them. You know, I mean, 20s, I really let it go. And into my 30s, I I wanted to stop drinking, but I didn't want to stop drinking. Mm -hmm. it, it was such a paradox. Right. And, and, and there's an imaginary line that one crosses. And I've worked with uh, individuals who, from the ages of 18, up to 65 in, in, in treatment and, and, and through AA and recovery. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've actually, I, I sponsor a couple of guys who were in their 60s. I sponsor a couple of guys who are in their 20s. Um, the ones in their 20s are a little bit more difficult and because like I said- Everybody in their yeah, 20s- they, Yeah, the you program. know what, they think they have all the time in the world and, <laughs> and before you know it, it just, um, and then once you take, you know, for me, I was, I, I thought sobriety was gonna kind of be boring and glum, but, mm -hmm. Tell you what, there Get hasn't been back, one. Man. Yeah, there hasn't been one boring day in sobriety, man. It's it's been a. It's so funny. You know, early on, one of my first AA meetings I went to, they in the halls they had all these stuff on on the walls. It's you know, there's live and let live, and one day at a time. And and one of my first sponsors he pointed out one on the wall. He said, "It said think, think, think." He goes, "You read that up there?" I go, "Yeah, think, think, think." It means I got to I got to really think through this. He goes, "No, no, no." He goes, "That's not for you." He goes, "You don't need to be thinking." Yeah. Um, you know, your best thinking kind of landed you in the position that you're in. And so for the first two, three years in sobriety, you know, I just sat and I listened and I learned. But, you know, if you're young and you think you have a problem, there, there's all sorts of resources out there. If you got a career path, you know, there's obviously EAP at, at your job that you can mm -hmm. maybe could talk to them. You know, there's a lot of confidentiality with that. There's AA meetings all over the the Tri-County area. Um, you know, there's a lot of great people and a lot of great recovery. Yeah. Now, Amy, you you mentioned um, becoming a prosecutor. It sounds like you wanted to put people in jail more than Eric did. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'm just I'm just saying. I'm uh, so yeah, it's not a contest, obviously. No, it's not. But you've you've now clearly been affected and touched by this, and it sounds like this is something. And I I know uh, in in the in the drug courts that it's just it's just kind of a, a paradigm shift on how to treat these problems. Mm -hmm. Incarceration, there's a there's a time and a place for incarceration and there's a time and a place for help. I know that one of the questions that we had uh, on the, the chat was, you know, what is all this costing? At the end of the day, you know, the taxpayers wanna know what, what this is all costing. I'm gonna bet this is probably cheaper than incarcerating somebody for, for a long time. <laughs> I, I'm just, just a hunch. Just a hunch, your hunch is correct by a long shot. We're looking at probably $3,500 to maybe $5,000 for treatment. And we are very, very fortunate that we live in the Tri-County area. Mm -hmm. The Platt, the Clay Platt Ray, I sometimes get that mixed up, which order Different goes. Different Tri, yes, right, yeah. the, the levy board um, helps provide funding for those for our treatment court. And so then people get to enter and then um, based on their income, they either pay back part of it, mm -hmm. or they're able to do the program for as little as $5 a month and sometimes for free. So we make sure that there's not a cost for the participants, but the cost savings is significant compared to incarceration. And not only that, but then you consider the recidivism rate and they're not mm -hmm. going back. And they're also having the chance to live with their families, um, provide great incomes for their families, uh, what they do for our community. We calculated up today more than 10,000 hours of community service have been done by wow. just our DWI court participants. So we're making sure they're giving back as well. And so it definitely um, comes out on the positive for the taxpayers. You know, to kind of add on that too, you know, when I came into the the program, I was unemployed and unemployable, mm -hmm. right? I mean, yeah. the, the, the police came to serve arrest warrants at, at my place of employment, needless to say, you know, there was no yeah. more. <laughs> Yeah, yeah getting no out of that one. Job there. Um, <laughs> That's kind of frowned upon. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, that. But you know, early on, you know, my 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 probation officer, the, the, they force not force us, but they they encourage and well force to to get a, to get employment, mm -hmm. gainful employment. And so, me taking that step, trying to get into the um, into the workforce again, has led to a, a place today where 
where I am a business owner, right? I, mm -hmm. Nationwide, we have um, we have 75 employees here in the United States. We have offices over in India, offices in Brazil. Um, you know, the amount of taxes that, that myself and my employees pay, mm -hmm. not, not to mention the, the business itself, mm -hmm. you know, corporate payroll tax, um, uh, Social Security, and all of that stuff is included. And, and, and it gives, you know, my employees an opportunity to to seek uh, their professional career paths. And, you know, this this thing just doesn't reach the individuals in the, the end of program, right? I mean, I have helped a lot of people who have helped a lot of people who have helped a lot of people in recovery. So this thing is exponentially kind of branching out there. And when you got 159 participants, and I've, I've, I know quite a few of them because I've seen them in meetings over the years, yeah. um, they're helping people and they're helping people. So it's it's you kind of see the 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 extreme benefit of this and it's it's not just in recovery but when it we're talking about taxes and giving back to the yep. system mm -hmm. now uh, uh you're very well spoken by the way so i, I want to give you a chance to plug your business because i was going to ask you what you do for a living <laughs> you, you kind of got there but uh, do you, if you don't want to say he that, runs the rival cool. newspaper yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know that's well, you didn't know that but uh <laughs> <laughs> right. You got to know the answers. And ju the judge knows the answers to the questions before he asks them. <laughs> well, you know, I work in uh, international logistics and supply chain, so um, okay. I don't know if you guys have been following any of the of the global supply oh, I mean, chain. What's going on in that yeah. Yeah. last year? Or so you know, the, the the things that have been going on there have just been uh, it's been a little a little crazy and a little hectic. Uh, you know, we we export a lot of uh, commodities. We're one of the largest. Uh, uh, commodity exporters from North America, so it um, it's been fun. I've been doing it for twenty years. I like I said I was doing it, and then I lost my job. I didn't think I was going going to be able to get back into it because of my felony record, mm -hmm. uh, because I had to clear U.S. Customs backgrounds and things like that if I wanted mm -hmm. to get back in. But uh, I was very fortunate enough to have have an employer, um, uh, you know, law for group uh, who who actually gave me an opportunity, you know, and a couple of gentlemen over there that I'm very thankful for to to get me to a point where I am today. Can you help me with my Nebraska Furniture Mart order? I, I, it's, it, it's I got an e I, every Friday I get an email say it's going to be another week. So I'm, you know, we'll.